Woo! I can see we're live. We should be live now, yes. Yep. Good morning, everybody. Good if morning. We have any viewers? Uh, it's who knows? Who early knows? morning in US, like super early morning. People don't want to wait for us, but uh, as always, there are some uh, weird connection problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially oh, I thought you were going to say some weird people. people that are watching us already. <laughs> especially yeah. from the US. Especially right. if you have viewers from US, yes. Yeah. Because it's, it's unreasonably early. Welcome to, kind the, way uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to the uh, latest episode of Fellowship of the Punch Boards. It's number nine. It's game terms. Uh, but as always, we're going to talk about uh, our recent plays. First of all, I'm Ilya. I am Alina. And I'm Baker. 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 He, he's baking. <laughs> Sorry, I, you guys, I, I'm waking up. I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there for everybody. <laughs> You're going to get to those puns very soon. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll work on Baker. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, oh, well, you got Sagrada on the shelf behind you. Man, I want to play that game. Yeah, Sagrada? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the games we wanted to tell. We were about to talk about the, like, the recent plays. So, yeah. I guess let's start with that. Um, <laughs> I just made an introduction to myself, kind of, to the yeah, topic. Yeah. But anyway, um, so uh, some recent plays we have yeah. had. We didn't play that much past month. Because we, we start struggling with time again, like badly. Uh, this is the reason they, we have been skipping uh, the board game blender as well, unfortunately. And not many reviews either. Because, yeah, we just have like sometimes one or two evenings a week when we see each other. So it's, it's like bad schedule plus, plus a lot of work. But it will all end very soon. Okay. It will all be better very soon. I'll have a yes. new schedule. Though it will be hard at the beginning, but I'll have a new schedule soon. So so very different schedule. And I'm gonna I'm gonna announce it once maybe Pro in the next probably month. next. Yeah, in, in probably the next. next. I'm gonna tell you what's going on. So yeah. not before that. Before that, la within last month, we received Sagrada and played it. Uh, it is slightly similar to role player, right? So because it's like a puzzle, uh, it's a dice puzzle. But Sagrada is easier, definitely, which is more like relaxing evening play where you are creating the beautiful stained glass ornaments. And uh, you have lots of restrictions, like how can you play as dice, the color dice and the shade. So they, they call it like color and shade, which is color dice and uh, amount of pips. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of restrictions there. But even with that, it's still, it's still usually quite easy choices. So turns are quick and it's just, it's beautiful it's absolutely gorgeous and it ends up beautiful and you have some tools there to help you out which there, there is like an interesting thing is that the tools are card cards uh, that every player can use but the first who use the tool is going to pay less like pay less for it but the next uh, next time you want to use it or next player who wants to use it has to pay more which is super interesting because if you if you like if you're the first one, then probably you will like um, use your chance too early, and you might not need it badly. And later on, you won't have those. I, I think there was. I don't. I don't remember how was the, the tokens called. Was there like um, not skill tokens? I don't remember what you had to pay for for the tools. Whatever. So later on, yeah, you you might had had been lacking them, and it was like you might. By the end of the game, you might need it bad the tools which you didn't you couldn't use anymore. So because you didn't have those tokens. Well, I really, really, really enjoyed it because this is totally my type of games. I absolutely love puzzle games. 
but Ilya didn't enjoy as much, unfortunately. Yeah, oh, really? Uh, what was it? Yeah, what was it? Didn't like it. Yeah, uh, I liked it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the game, but I would say this is the game that can win Spiel des Jahres for next year. I mean, this this is the game, and that, that could win. Yes, uh -huh. could be nominated and win as well, because this is the perfect Spiel des Jahres material, and that's uh, that's the problem with me. So, uh, for for me, I mean, like. Uh, I'm not into this Spiel des Jahres uh, games that much because they are rather easy. They don't have much meat on the bone and they don't have that much interaction between players. Although, yeah, yeah, you, you take away the dice from another player and that's such, and, you know, it's a, this, this thing. And then you, if you put enough tokens there, you block, uh, I'm sorry, not block your opponent, but you make, you make the tool cards uh, more expensive for the opponent. That's okay. Uh, but overly, it's just a family type puzzle that you're going to solve. Now, here we have role player as well, uh, which is right here on the shelf. The role player, I would say, is an advanced version of Sagrada because there is also a puzzle. You want to combine skills, uh, you, you put the dice down in, onto the player sheet as well, where you want to have certain amount of uh, skill points. So it's also a puzzle what colors you put where, what dice, of how many pips you put here, how many pips you put here. So, and there are different skills that modify it, but there are much more game to it. And there is much more to that puzzle, different aspects. Also, the cards are very different. They give you some really cool special powers and only you can use that power and such. So it becomes sort of a, um, a symmetric at some point. And yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that, the but the description, I haven't played out of one of those games, but the description of each, now that you, you know, make that comparison, I could mm -hmm. see how really role player would be kind of a very, very similar experience, but just slightly more in depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so. uh, role player is not as, as complex as it sounds, but I mean, like, th those cards are different abilities and such <clears throat> would be something extra. Yeah. In role problem. player, you have your own cards, so you have your own yeah. special abilities. But like. in Sagrada, I actually kind of like it more shared. That's I really like the idea that if each time you, you like you use it, it becomes more expensive. But well, okay, not each time. Not, yeah, but my problem is not with the Sagrada. It's it's a really cool game. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the design. But my problem is that I played role player before, and then played Sagrada, and I have role player. That totally, basically, it's for, for me. It's the same type of game, and when I choose if I want to play this kind of a puzzly dice game, then I'm gonna play role player and not Sagrada. So that's the thing. It just came came in uh, on the wrong time. In the wrong time. I don't know. I like actually both of them. I like both of them a lot, but with Sagrada, what I enjoy more and appreciate more is that it's easy so it's more like relaxing evening game while role player is really you have to think it's it's much harder but i really like sagrada is beautiful sagrada is easy to understand uh there are quite a lot of restrictions but it's still easier and i enjoy it more probably a little bit tiny teeny teeny tiny bits but i really enjoy for the reason that dice puzzle i expect to be more relaxing and quick turns and less thinking and more like more intuitive and you're more into puzzles uh, in i am more into puzzles, this kind yeah. of puzzles as well plus it's just yeah just how it is yeah yeah both uh, those games role player and sagrada are both definitely on my my wish list mm -hmm. and i i think like role player appeals to me personally more but i i mm -hmm. think that probably i could get the entire family to play Sagrada, uh, yes. you know, the, the mm -hmm. Biagia included. Definitely. Yeah. So, so that kind of means that probably Sagrada will get purchased before role player, even though I like the idea of role player more. I think you but, will like role player mm -hmm. much more anyway. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, Sagrada is definitely easier to put on the table. It's definitely easy to play with non-gamers and non-gamer family. I don't know, grandma, kids. Just because of the way it looks, if nothing else. I not mean, not only that, it's just easier to grab, it's easier to understand, right. it's easier to play it all. 
because yeah. really in, in role player you have more of those yeah. you can use this card if you can move uh, your you know the, the not dice but the token on on right or on on the left and like more of those deeper thoughts is like i can replay this card only when i do this and this before so yeah, it was, it's, 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 it's basically uh, cho choose the roll the dice choose the dice and place them and they're the the only restrictions are you shouldn't have exactly the same dice or c colors or numbers near each other right okay fine yeah. they're really like ex they're not that there are restrictions right it, like as a damage that few more and especially on the cards because they the one the cards you put yeah, in but there I mean, are different. small but there is uh there are those um achievements and goals they're like public ones and secret ones and you can if you play smart then you're gonna like check out the all the restrictions and you're gonna score as well and probably uh, mm -hmm. different uh, goals and maybe even been in several, several times i didn't care so about the secret goals that much yeah, I, I could see that i didn't see any value on them really because it's a family style game i would just basically take away the secret goals and make them uh, public this is just a the variety. Secret, goal, secret goal was super easy just one color yeah. Yeah. That was to simulate that every family has secrets, tell you. Yeah. That they don't want anyone to know about. Obviously. I saw Sagrada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you say you sold it's it? here yeah. as a placeholder right now. <laughs> right, yeah, that's just, that's just a box front. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I got you. Good, good move. But you but just told like, everybody about it, so it's not going to work yeah. out so well anymore. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> But now, yeah, let's go to the next game because we, we're babbling about okay, Sagrada. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not worth babbling about it that time. Hey! It's fellowship fellowship uh, of the Sagrada. Yeah, let, <laughs> let's go to the to another, uh, let's go to another sort of a Spiel des Jahres material. Was it nominated or if it... Wait, which I, one? I think it didn't win, but... Oh, yeah, it was, nominated. Nomi it was nominated. Nominated, okay. Yeah, it was nominated. Imhotep. So oh, I mean, yeah, that was nominated this past year. Yeah. Yeah, Imhotep is, um, <laughs> I would say it, Totally a uh, family style game, although there is an advanced variant we haven't played. So we played the basic variants where uh, all you do, uh, you turn over the cards, you have certain ships, and there are, you basically, you have some goods. So you can stock goods in, into your warehouse and then put them on the ship and then sail the ship to different locations like temple, pyramids, uh, whatever else there was, obelisk and such. So, and those resources, those blocks, that you ship to the places. You basically put them down. Uh, you construct, in pyramids, you construct the pyramids. In the market, you take the cards, which give you special abilities. In obelisk, you want to get the highest uh, amount of blocks, of your blocks and such. So you get, and you get points in various ways. So, so different locations basically give you points in various ways, depending on how you stack the blocks there. And there is a little bit of that um, influencing each other because uh, you, you can share the boat sometimes and then uh, whoever gets there first or the second, because some, like for example, if you're the first one, it doesn't mean you get the highest points for placing the block on the pyramid. Some places are like, for example, the first plate gives you three points, the second block will give you only one point, the third block you put will give you four points. So. Sometimes it's not the best to be the first. Sometimes you want to be the last or something like that. So you manage mm -hmm. basically all your resources, how you send them to these locations and such. So, and that's the whole game. And you want to get the most points. So there isn't much of that meat on it. Uh, maybe the advanced sides will be a little bit more interesting. It was fine. And I can see why it was nominated for Spiel des Jahres. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's it totally Spiel des Jahres. Panic of sharing the boat, sharing uh, the sort of a, a space and then influencing each other in a peaceful manner, peaceful way. So I really like the fact that uh, on your turn, you only put one stone, but someone else can move your boat. So even if you were trying to get to one location, you might end up in a different one. Uh, that was really interesting. And I think this add a lot of repl replayability because re replay value, sorry. Uh, because so much in this game does not depend on you. So much. What are you doing, Ilya? Okay, you talk. <laughs> I <finished laughs> talking. They're doing some weird. Oh, um, yeah, I haven't gotten around to playing Emotep yet. It, it's actually sold in like 
the big box stores around here right now, uh, Target carries it, which is pretty crazy. I guess maybe they're trying to get a hold of more Spill the CRS type games and stuff, but it looks really cool. I could actually, I was surprised how big the box was. I imagined yep. it was kind of a like Sagrada style box, but they it's could actually, actually do. They could totally do a smaller one. Okay, yeah, that, there's that like a sense. small like diagonal insert, which is pretty, but but I still like I like the standard boxes sometimes more than some weird boxes which are little little bit smaller, little bit uh, narrower than the standard boxes because. Look on the shelf. It's it's also that you know, and how I, you stack the games. I, I really like how they stack so well on the Kallax shelf. I think those narrow uh, Sagrada style boxes uh, stack even better because you can put them upright and you can put them sideways and put something on top. The same one, but the same boxes. So yeah, co cool. Sure, uh, the standard boxes are cool, but they can be different standards. Like not all the one, right? Bigger, smaller. I know. Narrow. But. Whatever. <laughs> so, what have you played, Baker? Uh, let's see. Well, I've been playing a bunch of King Domino over the past few days. Uh, in fact, so since, yeah, well, it's fantastic. I really like King Domino a lot. I mean, it's it's definitely you know one of those games like we were just talking where it's a simpler game. But the reason I've been playing it so much is I played it once with <clears throat> once with Biaja, and now she's asking repeatedly to play it. So, which she doesn't like she like she's not into board games, you know, the way I am. And for her to be asking to play a game over and over again is, is a pretty big deal. So we've been playing it uh, a pretty good number of times, I think. Yeah, a pretty good number of times over the past few days. So King Domino, for anybody that isn't familiar with it, is basically you've got I mean, they're shaped like dominoes. They don't look like dominoes. They they have different terrains on them. I think you know, like forest and wheat fields and wastelands and stuff like that. And you have little meeples that you use to draft these pieces. And depending on where you put your meeple to draft will determine your turn order for the following turn. But then you have a little castle and you attach it to your castle and then slowly build your kingdom out. And it can't be more than five by five, which means you end up, you know, a lot of times you'll end up screwing yourself up and not being able to place pieces later on in the game. But then at the end, you just score it up based on like, uh, like if you have a, a grid of five forest tiles and then there's two because some of the tiles have crowns so let's say there were two crowns on that then that'd be two times five you get 10 points for that and see who has the most points and it lasts 15 minutes it's a real quick game mm -hmm. and you can teach it in five minutes easy so it's a it's a pretty fun game and it looks really cool too I like all those tiny yeah. details uh, on on the tiles I always yeah, love it it's little, like you have different yeah. monsters and fox and things yeah i really love the game and i'm i think i one i'm one of those who asks constantly to play the game but Ilya is kind of fed up with that <laughs> and doesn't want to play with yeah. me anymore yeah. that's that's the that's the puzzle uh puzzly game i would say which is up my alley because um i would say it depends of course how many times i win in a game like we play it constantly and i'm winning all the time it means that uh, not only that I enjoy the game, it means that the puzzle is not so hard because I'm not a puzzle type person. So, right, which is good. Which is good. The, Have y'all played the, the the like? I think it's called the Mighty Duel variant or whatever in the back of the rule book for two players, where you do a seven by seven instead of five yeah. by five. Yeah, yeah, yep. I, yeah. I that's. Did you like it? I no, I haven't played it yet. Oh, I want okay. to play that. Well, fine. I've only played There's it once, really. two player. And that was just to get the rules. So mm -hmm. now every time after that, it's been three players. But whenever we get back around to play a two-player again, then we're going to do the seven by seven. We tried once, and I think we both agree that we like five times five more. Yeah. Because it was at some moment it was even like harder to to see the board, harder to like figure out where are the like the edges, and it was like a little bit too much of that constant calculation. Probably. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, but it's fine. I I think it's sort of the matter of taste here, like time five times five, five or seven times seven. So, what's another game you wanted to talk about, Alina? So, um, we definitely mentioned a couple of times uh, my rather recent discovery about Roxley Games that everything they publish 
has super high ratings. There's only one single game, their first published game, which, which doesn't have many ratings at all, so it, it's not even ranked. But four other games that they published, or like fourth is going to be published, they are ranked below 500 in Board Game Geek, which is extremely high, in my opinion. Below 500? I mean, over 500, if you want to say, mm. like, closer to one. No, all of them. So the, the ratings are 25, 66, three, right. 391, and the lowest rated game is uh, 498 in rank. Do you say below 500 then for that, or how do you say it? I English? say below 500 because it's low. Numbers are less than 500. How yeah. can you say above 500? Rankings, you know. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Ah, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, because fine. Technically, yeah, yeah. Well, ranks, yeah. right? Okay, ranks are. Uh, damn it! Okay, you got it. So it's it tricky with rank, but I would agree yeah, with yes. the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you. Yes. They are all in the uh, top five hundred. Yes. So okay. Like, yeah, yeah. There we go. We can all agree on that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 The rank board. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> so um, then we decided to play the last game we haven't played from Roxley, and we bought uh, the Super Mother Load which is so the idea there is that you go to mars with uh, like machines and you start digging to get some like sort of resources and you know score points get more cards like the idea is like obvious like humans go to another planet and they obviously ruin it they don't care for what there is and they're gonna just create like a holes and and just take all the stuff all the good stuff from there and leave so it's a puzzle game, once again, um, uh, but it has like a deck building aspect is like you can dig for resources, they have different values, you, um, and these resources you're going to use in order to buy cards to add them to your deck which uh, means that your deck is going to grow, you're going to mm -hmm. have more powerful cards in order to dig deeper and the deeper you go the more like cool and expensive resources you get but again, there are like um, there are restrictions. So, for example, there are metal plates that can only be drilled uh, by certain uh, in, by certain color, and then there are stones that can only be exploded. And if you just want to drill, you have to combine cards with the same colors, and then you have to drill in like um, in a straight line. If you explode, you have a, you have given are given a pattern on the card, and you have to put exact pattern on the on the board. So mm -hmm. again, you get the restrictions that you try to understand and try to get through, and yeah, and you have those you have um, um, forget the word again, um, Ilya small skulls. Uh, what? What do you get those it's small artifacts? You mean? Artifacts, yeah. Yeah. So there are artifacts that give you some additional, like build, like special thing is there, either scoring or like special things you can like use later on in the game. It was much more puzzly than I thought, which I totally loved. I absolutely loved the game, but I think both the times we played, I totally destroyed everybody else. Mm. Yeah, but um... oh, the art there is quite weird and interesting. Yeah. Let's say it's definitely not everybody's cup of tea. I think that was my biggest problem with the game at the beginning. I didn't like the art. Once we try, uh, started playing, I really liked it. I really dig the uh, the ones that um, the, the the deck building aspect because uh, you have some of your cards already uh, in your hands. And then you don't have too many of them. You, there's no like 10 of them. So you don't really have to get rid of them that much. And not so many cards get into your deck. Uh, if there are more cards in, in, in your deck, then it's really cool because you get a lot of really good abilities and points. And it's sort of a, a limited deck builder right here. And it's more control over what you have, what you get, how you use it. So I like that. I like that aspect, definitely. I'm super glad we actually found the game. I'm like super glad. Although I don't think Ilya is going to play it with me a lot. Because first, it's it's not Ilya's type. Ilya, it's, Ilya doesn't love puzzle games, which I do. And 
Yeah. Ilya was whining a little bit in the game. (laughs) That we're taking all the good tiles away from him. Yep. Really good wine, so. uh, I think that I think the board game geek search function is broken. Uh, It is. It is. It's not pulling anything up right now. Yeah, I was in the morning. I was like, "What? Where I'm doing mistake? I'm like taking like letter by letter from the box." And I was like, "Uh, weird." Then I tried to find another game, and yeah. Yeah, I'll send yeah, you I the link to the chats uh, for everyone as well. So, Super Mother Load is um, really cool, really cool it title. I think really it deserves cool more praise right now. It was it, it went under the radar Scottish. because because of the company was new and it was one of the first games. So, and they came with the second edition. The second edition is probably better, and it was inspired by the game called Ordner Mining, which is the same designer, Matt Tolman. Who makes sales to Steam, by the way, which is heavy Euro hybrid type game coming out from Roxley as well. And Brass, Brass, uh, Birmingham. So there is Brass Lancaster or Lancashire, Lancashire, Lancashire well, whatever. Mm-hmm. Basically, there is that. The Roxley games uh, have the uh, new Brass edition, and then they have the Brass Birmingham, which is uh, basically the variant to the Brass with some new mechanics and the new map. And Matt Tolman worked with, the designer of Supermodel worked with uh, Martin Wallace to bring this uh, Brass Birmingham. So he's a, uh, he's a cool designer, I think. He's, he's, he's gonna do great if he continues such work, so. Yeah, we're curious to see. But one thing I actually noticed today in the morning, when we were looking, first I found out about uh, Roxley, and when we bought the um, Super Motherload, then it was ranked 508 or 509. So it's actually, actually, uh, even if it was published a couple of years ago, but right now it actually like got better rank. So it's like getting higher. Mm-hmm. Not sure how long and for what time, but right now it just, which is a, which is actually yeah. unus- unusual. So, but I briefly want to mention that, of course, um, we play more games, but some games are rather experiences than board games, and these are the escape room games. Mm-hmm. Yes, still not over them. Getting extremely yes, extremely popular. We have played already the three exit titles and lock uh, scenarios. We. And then we also played, lately we played this, uh, this is like an escape room uh, in a box, it's, it's from Think Fun. This is not the exact same, it's like, um, it's, the, it's the second scenario. So we played the first one, it's from Think Fun. And this one has envelopes that you, basically has the same color disc, and if you get the code right, the colors and symbols right, you get to open a new envelope where you get some Cool thing. So that's, a, that's well. a single scenario in that box. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. And this what's, is, the, what's the price on it? Um, I don't remember, but it's like was it maybe twenty dollars or something like that? Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe, All right. So if you get it in, 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 it's reasonable. In Europe, it's more expensive. Yeah. You get it in cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, and it's probably it's one of it's like unlock the one that you can uh, like you can't play it second time, right? But you can give it to others to play. There is like. What uh, okay. I really like is that the thing found they uh, they put on their website step by step put like uh, instruction to put it put it, put it back because mm-hmm. once you have everything Still on the table you will not remember what was in which envelope so they actually I did mm-hmm. not expect that from a company to put it on the website like really like clear step by step so first you put this mm-hmm. ones then you put this ones in and I think that's like There's super cool. Sort of a, like a rule book which says it, like it, it's a bit thematic rule book and uh, there aren't really many rules, just solve the puzzles, that's it. But how yeah. do you like, so first of all, set up the game, look at so this text right here, now call your friends, send the invitations, and then you can also go to their website and for that send invitations to the friends so they can come uh, in one of the evenings and play the game with you. You can, they can, they have this suggested music as well that you can uh, play while you're playing the game. So uh, many, many things and the hints and such. So I really like the idea of that. And this is rather an easier, um, I mean, thing fun, what they are doing. It. They, these scenarios are a little bit easier. They're very easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but okay. uh, yeah, we'll have the, Escape room 
the game. There are so many different. The one with the uh, yeah, I have escape room the game. Yeah, so we will have the the one with basic scenarios in the box and then two separate scenarios extra. So very soon, I'm I'm so excited, and I cannot get over it. It's escape room in the box is just <laughs> my thing. It's just and well, I'm gonna do my top ten at some moment, and I would say I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna just put the genre instead of the exact game into my top ten. That's how much I like it. And I just don't want to put exact game. Like maybe I can. I can it is going to be cheap, yeah. Yeah, but I can. I can put a lot. But I mean, like, <laughs> but I like because the whole you don't put them. like all co-op games just as a single. Like you don't put a genre as a That's like the thing. The co-op games are right now like the worker placement game, co-op games. They have so many games in that in that genre in that. I mean, mechanic or genre. It's growing as well. Yes, but right now it's a tiny genre. And I just and, don't want to... Well, I'll say, I mean, I haven't played any other than Escape Room the game. But in my mind, I, I have a hard time remembering which or which because they all have such similar names and they're all the exact same oh, yes. concept. So, so I can kind of see, in this instance, putting an entire genre in, in a spot only because they're all so... Ultimately, they're so similar, even though they have yes. different things they offer and everything. But, it's all about solving puzzles you know, as an experience rather than the game, separate game with separate design and separate, like... I'd say I understand that as well. I really do. And I don't think it's, like, right or wrong, but just... I, I, I don't think I still agree fully because, come on, let's say roll and write games are not they, a big genre, they, right? Top 10. So they, roll and write name are... Uh, roll and write... Uh, yeah, games. Eight. It's it's not a big genre either, but I wouldn't put them as just one single entry. But these are like separate games. That's the thing. There's some like the what I talk about is the escape room games, exit room games. They are a genre which is sort of experience, not a full board game. That's where where I think I can cheat because it's not a board game, in a sense. It is and it is not. So that's the thing. If I Alina, you've got some backup in the in the chat. Really, yeah, really, yeah, really. I can see that. I can see. I'm not alone. Yes. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, uh, one thing I also ordered the Dexcape. Not the Dex Dex Circus, not the Dex Circus, but Deckscape. Um, and it's the Italian version of uh, Escape Room games with sixty cards. Wow. It's similar to Unlock. So I'm gonna try all of them. Like yeah, it just can't uh, be. Every every Real other old. day, Ilya sends me like a link to a new escape room game, and he was like, "Oh my god, I need it!" Something like that. <laughs> Ilya there needs every seven, single one. Th of them. There is a total like right now they are in German. I don't know how fast they will translate them to English, but there will be there are three Cosmos uh, Exit the Room titles uh, right now in English, and seven more are in German. Seven new ones that should come this year. I don't know how many of them will come in English, but seven more. The whole year I'm going to play them. Yeah, just only them. I'm going to learn German. It, it's almost like you, you've uh, decided to join up a, with a, a living card game, only it's not one company doing it to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm totally in. <laughs> I'm getting addicted. Oh, yes. Uh, you are already. You definitely are. Which is cool. I like that because Time Stories was the Addiction first. Addiction is cool. Wait. Yeah, that already sounds wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever addiction is that, it just sounds wrong. Yeah. So, okay. Do you want to mention anything else, speaker, or shall or should will we go? we go to the topic? Um, shall we go? Right. Bye. Yeah, we can go to the topic. We can go to the topic. Okay. <laughs> so um, today's topic is game terms, and there are. So we, we had to restrict ourselves from doing too many of them because otherwise we'll just be talking the whole day. And although if we'll talk the whole day, then at some point more people can join us. So <laughs> that's that's the good thing about that. But we have some uh, terms. I put it I wrote it down here, so I'm gonna just name them as we talk about them. Is it fine? Well what, what do you mean you put you're gonna put them here? No, no, I, I like I, I have my own I put them in the in the Word document so I can follow them easily. 
what we wanted to talk about. So you can totally use a Word document. I don't see any issues with that. <laughs> okay. I asked about the different things. You must memorize them. Memorize them. So I'm gonna go for half an hour. Well, okay. So, uh, but game terms, there's so many different ones, and sometimes people get confused by the, some game terms. Sometimes people start arguing because uh, there is a certain game which is whatever, and then the other person says it is not, and so we're going to argue here as well a little bit, I'm sure. I'm going to talk about what is and what is not uh, the certain term. But uh, the first one I have, uh, here is engine building. So I wanted to discuss engine building because we had the discussion with Alina before what is or what is not an engine building. Because if we look at it theoretically, engine building is something where you start with almost nothing and then as you go through the game you become better and better and better and basically in the end you feel like you have a well-oiled well machine in front of you where you do the action and... It's such a cliche phrase, I, I can't yeah, but, just get away. But, uh, you do the action and some chain reactions occur. Yeah. At, at first, like, for example, that's why... That, and that's the thing. There are deck building games. Pure deck, deck building games. Can you name them engine building games? And that's the biggest question. Because it's the same. You have starter cards, but as you go further, you get better combinations, you get better things. I separate them because... You know, so, I think there's definitely a clear separation between deck building and engine yeah. building. So for me, sure. engine building <laughs> is not only the game where you are getting better, where your combinations are getting better, because uh, that's in very many games, because it's just it's a just natural way of, of like game flow. But yeah, for but me, I think I engine mean, game is that you should be have should have more options throughout the game. So you create, I don't know, worker spots, or you open new like new uh, place on your board where you can put pawns and and do stuff. So it's not just getting better, not just getting more powerful combinations, but I think getting more like 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 numbers, options, like more of stuff you can do, more mm -hmm. of a variety probably and i think um uh i wouldn't call deck builders uh engine building probably for the same reason because your cards are cards are more powerful but i think if the throughout deck building game you get different kind of like completely different kind of things you can play with your cards and do with your cards or different kind of actions on your card then maybe i would even call it uh, engine building at some at some point mm -hmm. but definitely not all deck builders are engine buildings we argued with um who is clive yeah uh, that i said that scythe is an engine building game it's it's a pure engine building game because you start so slowly and as you build up like for me, engine build game is something that grows, uh, mm. or a train that starts slowly and then and then goes like that, basically. And I feel that in Scythe, and whenever I feel that in a game, I feel like this is an engine building game. In deck building games, like for example, I I love Valley of the Kings. I don't feel that mm -hmm. a train starting and then going faster. That's why I call it rather a deck building game and not engine building game. So. Yep. So that's, I'm going to go with my gut feeling, you know, it's... Uh... Kind of same, but I agree that Scythe is definitely an engine building because even if you have your own board, which never, ch mm -hmm. never change because it's the same board, but still you are unlocking places for yourself. So yeah. you still are, if you unlock that, like the below actions, you might get something from, from other people. So you're constantly, for example, getting uh, some resources or you're going to constantly get something from other players and it's definitely engine building. Yeah, and for me with the engine building versus deck building, one of the key differences is that with deck building, when you're getting these cards, you're putting them into your, your deck and you, you don't, you, you get an idea of what's going to be available at the same time, but you don't necessarily yeah. always have all that mm -hmm. available at the same time. And yeah, obviously, you can call your deck so you have a better chance of that happening, you know, all <laughs> that kind of stuff. But with engine building, the way I've always looked at it is that you're, you know, you, you're placing new tiles out or, or whatever. You're collecting things that are in front of you that are going to interact with each other, and they're going to be there. And, you know, 
And so it's all about maximizing that interaction, you know, for your benefit. But, but all the stuff is right there in front of you and not, you know, put away in the deck somewhere and you're waiting for it to come back out. Yep. Yep. So that, that's, that's one of the big differences for me because, I mean, I could see how you could define deck building as a form of engine building, but the, you know, like say that deck building is a type of engine building, but not all engine building is deck building. You could say something like that, I guess. But really, ultimately, deck building is the fact that you're still dealing yeah. with the luck of the draw, mm -hmm. whereas in engine building, it should be more strategic so, than that, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the greatest point. So basically, what, what you want to say is that um, you have the stuff available to you all the time, and it just grows bigger. Right. Yeah. In in deck more, building, more efficient and all that. Yeah. Exactly. You have possibilities of getting doing greater things in greater combination, but it's not always available to you, and sometimes you just are screwed by the luck of of uh, draw. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But is is the uh, is the uh, scythe uh, engine building game for you? Scythe. I have not played scythe yet. So. <gasps> I, I I don't know. I can see the argument that it is. Yeah. Bye. I, just, <laughs> I, I can see the argument that it is at the same time. Um, I, I actually I Clive, not, so I, I need to play it to really decide yeah. if I think it is or not. Clive has been the first, the only person who ever not agreed that Scythe is a deck, uh, is uh, engine building. So it's not like a big discussion or big mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Argument. So it's more okay, like well, in that case, uh, yeah, ninety percent of people agree five, that it is engine building. Then yeah, forget that guy. Through. I would say like uh, that, that, that Clive says uh, that Scythe is a dexed circus game. So it's the what? Dexed circus. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that means. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. It's that's <laughs> for the viewers. They know. They know. They know everything. All the darkest uh, secrets we have. <laughs> so, but let, sh should we go to the uh, next game, sir? Yep. So the next one I have here is king making, and um, king making is all about where, basically, for me at least, is that you're playing with uh, multiple folks, and then at some point, one person just seem sees that he doesn't win the game. Yeah. But there are two other people who basically either one of them can win the game. And now the kingmaker is the one who by his actions can decide who will win amongst the other two. And I haven't really gotten to it that much in games. I don't know mm -hmm. why maybe we play right games, not with much kingmaking and not with those type of gamers. So probably yeah. what do you think about that? So at what point at what point do you can say that that person is king making? Or he's just yeah. doing the actions. Maybe he didn't know, maybe he's just doing the actions which will suit him well, or I don't know, he just decided like that. Why why do we call him king making? Or you know, king -making? I, I think the, the simplest way to be able to say that somebody is not being a kingmaker is if all the way up to the end of the, even after they know they can't win, at the end of the game, or as they reach the end of the game, they are doing whatever moves will still benefit themselves the most. So they're still trying to improve their own position, even though they know that, you know, they know they're not going to win. And as long as they're doing that, as long as they're maximizing their own score or trying to, you know, improve their, their placement or whatever, then I think whatever the outcome of that is, is just the outcome of it. It has nothing yep. to do with kingmaking. Whereas if that person is doing things that are intentionally detrimental to themselves for the purpose of helping somebody else, that's mm -hmm. when they're pretty clearly kingmaking. Yep, yep. But there are some people who are like... Uh, that was a really nice to say, told. Yeah. I totally agree now. Maybe, maybe, hey. I, thought, maybe I read it somewhere. Yeah. Some people like, oh, why did you do that? You know, now the other person will win. I'm sorry, I just did what I wanted to do in the game. It's we're playing the game. Mm -hmm. I want to do something. And some people just think about this king making too much and they yep. see the king making in almost every action that you do. Mm -hmm. Because you won't win. Why you do that? Uh, I'm sorry. Because I, I have to do something on my yeah. turn. Yeah, so we really don't have this kind of gamers in our group, which is like super cool. And whenever situation like what Ilyaks just explained happens, we 
pretty much never think about king making because we know that the person did not do that on purpose it's just that person just thought this could be the best possible action on that turn mm -hmm. I, I, I remember i, want, I, want I both to lose <laughs> like on the, even one of the somebody games, will win them. yeah on one of the games couple couple of days ago i i made an action which nearly like killed Ilya completely off and gave tons of points to another player but it wasn't like intentional because i just i thought it was the best action and at that moment i was like more thinking about blocking one person but i didn't think that if i block one person then obviously all of these points are going to go to another one so these kind of things just happen accidentally i just i had to pick something and really we don't have problem with people thinking that we do that on purpose or something like that okay i see that yeah but should we go to the next game are we all agree here right yeah i think so yeah okay. Do you all have a problem with people like I, I'm seeing in the chat? A lot of you were saying that like king making gets thrown around a lot in their groups. Is that something that y'all deal with? I I've never never That's had that problem. I read about that's something. Yeah. Maybe I didn't experience myself that much, but uh, that's something I read about where people start start ar arguing about this king making. Mm -hmm. No, I did not. No, you did, and so and mm -hmm. throwing this king making so. In this game, you have the king making uh, probability here, though really high. And when I read the reviews and such, so I think when you talk about king making, don't put it in the review. I'd say Perhaps. yes. I'd say it's it's almost okay. Like super many game ha games, you can do king making there, right? I think, but it's not like something with a game. It's more like how gamers play. I think it's more like yeah. turn to play, not term about to tell about the game, rather. Yeah, uh, well, like yeah, key making to me is is just like alpha gaming in that it's a problem with the game or not the game yeah. almost one hundred percent of the time. Oh, and yeah. and the way you fix king making or alpha gaming is you play with somebody else. Mm -hmm. really, yeah. That's what yeah. It comes to. All right, let's go to the if next you one. If you're married to the alpha alpha gamer or the King maker, well, that's gonna be more expensive to play with somebody else. But you know. what? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just say it. That, <laughs> that, like, if just somebody in your group, you can probably find someone else to play with. But if you're married to that person, then it's gonna be a bit of a problem. It's gonna, it's gonna take like a year and several attorneys and lots of money before you can play with somebody else. That's all okay. <laughs> yeah. But it would be worth darling, it. You're it worth it. overthinking, and I'm sorry, darling. I think you're an alpha gamer. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, I know, yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, next. next one is analysis paralysis. And what I'm talking about is AP prone players. And now I'm going to throw it in AP prone games. Yep. As well. So, let's talk about AP prone games. In AP prone games. And there are the same way as there are unicorns. I believe in unicorns and there are AP prone games as well. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> analysis paralysis uh, happens to players when they start thinking too much and trying to maximize every possible turn that they have and that's the player's problem he wants to get the best and then he analysis paralysis uh, begins where he starts to think of all the different possibilities and just cannot get out of the situation in his yep. head mm -hmm. that's where i think is the yeah what the uh, analysis paralysis problem so, so yep yep sorry yeah, i want to say the thing that uh we we basically agree on what, what is the analysis process uh, person but ap prone games are mm -hmm. out there as well some might not agree with me but i believe some games not intentionally i mean but they are designed like that so they will provoke uh, analysis paralysis even in the players even in me who i'm not an analysis process person but sometimes even I in some games like Yamatai, for example, it is. I, I love the game. It's a really cool game. But I can feel where I'm starting to become the AP prone player because of the game, not because of myself. There's a lot of choices in that game, aren't there? There's just choices all over the place. Extremely, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just you cannot play without thinking very much there. 
Okay, so this is one of the biggest point of arguments we have with Ilya and we disagree a lot on the reviews as well. I think Ilya is throwing that in um, way too often and way too easily and I don't agree with that because I really sincerely think that AP is more gamers problem than a games problem although i agree that as unicorns there exist ap prone games but um are, are we confirming the, that unicorns exist is that what we're doing right yes, now is this, yes y'all yes. have, have those oh, over in yeah. estonia yeah they're yeah, wondering where they were and now i know they're in estonia okay good it, by the yeah. way when, when I, I, uh, I, I you I, have I, to visit no. us yes yeah. to see we'll Sorry. show you just going off topic for a moment. I work in all the Hansa and in the restaurants, and we have these medieval times, and we have to sort of uh, act or let's say uh, do stuff in the medieval manner. And we have this sort of a uh, card terminal, the credit card terminal there as well. And when I bring it, I say it's it's a monk's magic. It's a magical machine. And when I bring out the the pen, uh, then I say it's a unicorn's blood. You're gonna put your free drops of blood on the paper, so the sign and signature and such. So, well, so and if you exist in, in my world, they do exist. I'm just saying that if I find one, I may go Dark Lord on it and drink its blood. I'm, that's all I'm saying, because I, you know, oh. I'm just saying I'd like to live, you know, longer than the standard 90 years. That's all I'm saying. I'm sorry, Alina is not too much into Harry Potter. Harry Potter? Oh, oh that, that's Harry. <laughs> that's a Harry Potter reference there, Alina. Yes. You didn't know, Alina? Or you? Uh, no, I don't think I knew it. Yeah, Voldemort. Okay, let's, get back, let's get back to AP. Oh in. yeah, we're off track. We're off track. Yes, we're um, off track. Okay. Track. It's it's fine. I know. Yeah, it's 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 your secret move to to, to get, to get not not spirit. tell not to tell that I disagree with Ilya. <laughs> so I think Ilya is throwing this phrase in way too easy because we have a friend and he's extremely AP pro uh, player and he will get the, those blocks and the, those AP moments nearly in every game. See, that's definitely a player problem. If it's that's every a game, player problem. Absolutely. Exactly, exactly. So, and that's the thing. And for me, the AP game... AP prone game has to be the one where the game creates those blocking moments for player players who usually don't have them. And I don't mean just one. And especially I don't mean near the end where, where the decisions are crucial, right? I mean throughout the game. Like the rounds are the ones where you get the blockage and not just just like the um, uh, like maximizing turn, right? And but you might just not understand and not know what do you need to do because you just get the block so the only game that comes to my mind that i would actually call an ap prone game is loop inc the only game mm, i see yeah that's the thing i what will never call yamatai or loop, five tribes uh, incorporated yeah loop loop inc incorporated it's yeah it's like a super special because the idea there that you you travel back in time and you try to do stuff again but your old you is still there and when you uh, travel oh. back in time third time you're kind of there three times so you need to be careful not to not to create like blocks not not to um pure thematically you don't want to to see yourself you don't want to like get stuck there so you just want to be more, uh, more like efficient when traveling back, and there, there is like the mechanically you have to put the cards in right order so that you would would be able to do the action until the end of the round. So this is, but I think it's like really works really nicely with the theme, but all the rest games where you just have to think. A little bit longer, a little bit harder to figure out what do you want to do. No, that's not a P prone game. I don't agree with that. Yeah. It's players well, thing, I and and it is fine to in some games to think a little bit longer, to have some like occasional blocks, very much occasional blocks in the game or occasional blocks at the end of the game, like doing your last actions. It's not a it's not a prob game's problem. It's not even problem at all. It's part of the game. That's 
Uh, that was, I become passionate here. Way, it was really <laughs> fun to that. Yeah, that was really fun to see that we have this sort of AP prone uh, person there in our gaming group. So it's sometimes fun to see with some games that are like, let's say, King Domino, and he thinks there, and I'm like, what do you think of like, um, why, why this, this it's. It's eight plus game. You, you're you're over eight, definitely. Right. Well, and what really is infuriating is when somebody who takes ten minutes for their turn, yep, in between their turn while it's going around the table is like on their phone or obviously not even paying attention to the game or or whatever. And then it gets to them and they got to take ten minutes to, because no, I, I I think this is for me AP is primarily a player problem that is exasperated mm-hmm. by certain games, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, because I, I know that a game like even I've had with like I'm trying to remember I had a game recently where I, a friend of ours his his girlfriend comes and she occasionally plays with us, but when she when we know she's coming, we'll usually pick games that are less a that people are less likely to get AP with because she is one of the worst. <laughs> she will, you know, come around to her turn and then she'll just sit there, and it's not it's not that she's you know. Mm-hmm. not a smart person or anything like that. It's just that she really wants to make sure that she's getting her best, her best move in. And I can't remember what game it was. It was a game though, that it should not have been happening with. And so that's when it's clearly a, a player problem, but mm-hmm. this is kind of a unique, a unique problem. I think where it's, it's a combination of the player with the game as well. But. Yeah. What, what, um, if you have a uh, AP prone person in your gaming group and you cannot just say to him that come on, you should, like, leave this group. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but, no, no, you know how you can... The friend we, uh, we have, is, he's yeah. fine with that, and he's fine knowing that we will not play some of the games with him. But I'll give you the hint how to get rid of that player. From the, just start bringing only real-time fast games. <laughs> yes, Escape <laughs> the Curse of the Temple, Four Gods, uh, Magic Maze, Everything like with the zombie 15, everything with, with the real time and with s- lots of stress. And you, then you say that, oh, I didn't bring any other games. And then you just play this one uh, all the night. And then in two days, he'll be gone. He'll be gone. He'll be hey, in California. I'll be right back, already. y'all. Right? What? I'll, be, I'll be right back. Sorry, I got, I got to run real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, run for us. Run. Uh, yeah, what was the game where, uh, we, I think it was Yamatai probably, where I, uh, meantime, while one player was thinking I'm making his turn, I washed the dishes and I fed the cats and I came back and he was still thinking. Yeah, that was Yamatai. Yamatai? Yeah, that was, pff, that was epic, honestly. In our playthrough, somebody <laughs> wrote there that um, I was taking uh, turns three, four times longer than you. And I was the, uh, I was like, what? You know, and when I watched it, not really, just because I just had bigger combinations. I just had more to do, uh, but mm-hmm. there wasn't much thinking. So that's why we're also don't throw this AP prone everywhere. Cause... Yeah, you know, you know, you're talking to yourself, right? You know, you're talking, you are throwing an AP Pro game constantly. Yes, yes, that's true, yes. And I'm trying not to do that anymore. So I'm trying my best. So that's why I tell everyone else also that don't start calling AP Pro almost everyone where somebody thinks a little bit more. That's that's not the right thing to do. Because if sometimes you have a bigger turn than the other player. Yep. And it takes you longer. And that's fine. I'm totally yep. fine with it. Occasionally, it's fine. I totally agree. Occasionally, it is fine to have your turn longer, but it's not fine when it happens constantly. It's, then it's not okay, yeah. I, I think. So, but uh, while Baker is away, should we get to our uh, one of the most argued um, game terms? That was the one. No, uh, there is another one. No, this is the one. And this is point salad, point salad games. I don't think we are arguing about that a lot. It just came recently. Almost. All right, then it will be just second came play. So when we talk about point salad games, these are the games where almost I, you know what? You... Yeah, 
you know, can we just skip this one and take another one? Because this is, as we are disagreeing, I really what? want the, oh, Baker's back, cool. Right, so this is the term I really want to discuss with Baker right. because if we are disagreeing, then I need to Baker to hear and and I need his or opinion. Or well. yes, you know, yeah. <laughs> I just I just said point salad and Alina started arguing with me. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll king make this argument. Let's go. So, <laughs> yeah. So we, we talk about point salad games and uh, I was just started talking. So point salad games are the games where almost everything you do, uh, you you get points. You just get constantly points. You get a lot of points. You, you put put something here, you get points. You put something here, you get points. You you just sneeze, you get points. That's the points on game. And uh, <laughs> yeah. and these kind of games, for me at least, also, where what where can I say? There's there's the line between just a game with lots of points and points on game is that these games are rather abstract. Their theme doesn't mean too much. And they have sort of a generic theme usually, and it's just yeah. all about maximizing your points and nothing else. So and that's where we have the argue as well, where there are some games that, for example, with Yamata, there was this as well. So I, uh, it's not like when I thought about it, it's not like I call it fully a point salad game. I didn't call it, I said that it's kind of a point salad game for me, not completely, because everything, almost everything you do, gives you points. There isn't much theme to the game. And um, basically what you're doing, the, the major things you're doing give you points. And on the other hand, there are some games that have many points. For example, we played Empire's Age of Discovery. Um, we'll just compare it to that. So some people might uh, say that it's a point salad game because you get a lot of points there. Not really, because in Empire's Age of Discovery, major things are there is a worker placement and area control, let's say, or sending to the new world. When I place workers into the event boxes, I don't get any points. When I send these uh, workers to the new world, I don't get any points. But I score points uh, on the third, sixth, and ninth round, uh, eighth round, sorry. So there is much of the points going on, and you score a lot, over 100 and such so, but um, your major things you're doing, the worker placement, this is the major ma main mechanic there, you're not getting points by, by putting down these workers and such. So that's where there's a line between saying points out or not. Again, um, majority of the games, uh, you want to get victory points, right? Like the, the end game is victory points, not like you win or lose, you usually get some points. Um, and these kind of games, you as these are oriented on victory points, you get them throughout the game, and usually a lot. And usually every single turn you can score something. So again, I think it would be too easy to throw in the term um, point salad. And um, I'm not sure I agree with the fact that if the, like, the theme doesn't like really... Uh, it's not that strong. So it's if the theme is not strong, it's more like an abstract game or yeah. that side. And abstract style games are either win lose or victory points. So if it's an abstract and with victory points, I wouldn't call it pretty much automatically point salad. So I think for me, uh, the point salad is more the game where you get a lot of points throughout the game, of course, but um, more like an a separate. So I just. I just did an action. I scored this one small tile. I'm not gonna do anything with it. It's just points. I'm gonna leave it that way, and I'm I'm gonna move forward. Not the games where you like collect stuff. And for example, the more blue meeples you have, the more points you get. Like five tribes, or the more set collection you get, the more points you get. Because even if you got this this particular set on your one turn, um then I lost my thoughts, I lost my point. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that these points, the ones that you collect throughout the game are pretty much not connected. It's not that there is a goal where I'm like heading to and I'm just collecting those small points throughout the game. It's not like a clear goal, but it's more like a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, and these are not really connected. So I, I think this is the point solid for me. So the, the way that I've always I've always thought of point salad is that 
basically that pretty much any anything you do in the game is going almost anything you do in the game is going to reward you with some sort of points and with the idea being that there's lots of varied strategies to try to get to the most points at the end of the game i don't think that has necessarily root is over here uh, arguing that it has to do with the number of points as well but i i, I mean I, you know, I could award 10,000 points for doing something or 10 points, and really in the, at the end it's going to be the same thing if if everything else is scaled properly. So, sorry, Root, I disagree with you on that one. But good points otherwise. Um, so I think that really, yeah, with points... Can you bring up, please, what they spoke in, in, the, in the chat? Because first, these comments are not going to be seen later on, and second, when I was talking, I was actually not reading. Can you just like main ideas what was discussed oh, there? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, let's see. He says when the oh, game goes over two hundred points. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Root was saying that over two hundred points makes a game automatically uh, point salad, or at least get uh, probably point salad. Stefan is saying that actually point salad he feels like is almost kind of a um, a negative term for people that you know that people use that don't like euros. Mm -hmm. Kind of like saying a dice chucker for an Amerithrash game, which I don't know. I, I think both point salad and dice chuckers are just, you know, it's, 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 I, don't know, I could see how there's a negative connotation, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, I've always just kind of used it as a, as a description for those two types of games. Uh, what else is going on in here? Um, no, it's just main ideas. It's fine. It says that the point yeah. of a point salad game is to allow diverse strategies. So, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I fully agree with. say that. Um, uh, okay, uh, my I question is, Ilya, know. how many games in our collection would you call point salad games? Like, a, like approximately number. I and Baker, cannot even yes, tell you really. I wonder as well how many games about would this you... term. When I start thinking about this term, it's really hard because yeah. um, I don't know. I just have to go through uh, all the games and see. For example, let's say uh, I'm. I'm just gonna name the game that came up to my mind is a. Uh, for me, at least, it's a five tribes is sorta of okay. Gold West, yes, Gold West. Gold West is is point salad for you. Yes, it was basically there is no really a theme there, and you almost always get some points. You you move at the track, you get points. You buy this one, you get points. You do this, you get points. It's all about just getting the most points. It's a but it's a solid era. I like that. There are some other aspects which I like. Uh, let's say point salad game. I, I don't know that I the closest I have to point salad, and I want to stress that I don't consider this game point salad, but it's the one that gets closest to reaching that definition is Orleon. Uh, and that's you know because you get you get points from goods, you get points from moving along the progress track. You, you, there's lots of different ways to get points, but I still don't feel like that one really qualifies and and I don't think that I really have one. And keep in mind that I've only recently, well, I say recently, in the past year and a half or so, started realizing that I enjoy like strict Euro games as much as I do uh, Amerithrash games. So I don't have a lot of them yet, but I'm working on it. And But Orleon is probably the closest I have to it, but I still don't think it quite qualifies, really. Mm -hmm. Somebody argues about Scythe uh, being a point cell game. Ryan, I don't agree. Yeah. I don't agree that Saif is point salad. I, I can see where Ryan so said there are so many different scoring ways ways to score, but that's the thing. It's it's not like it's, not it's all just about different the ways, ways to, to score. score. Yes, different ways to score are different it's, ways to score. It's about it's, like for me, it's like uh, I put this meeple here, I get points. Why did I get points? Because I just put the meeple there. Nothing else. There's no theme to it. There's nothing really that enhances this feeling of uh, I get the reward. I feel like I get points. And whenever I feel like I go here, I get points. I go here, I get points. I'm starting to, to call this name a game, a point salad game. But mm -hmm. is that, is that, Alina, is that not quite like, do you not agree with that as far as? I'm trying to think. I was actually looking a lot on the Gold West board. And and I thought about one more thing, I think, that I don't think the gold dress is point salad because the main thing is there to get the areas, to get the majorities on um, certain resource and resource types and areas. And, as, and the two additional things where you can score are just additional 
side scoring where like you might have too much of certain resources so this is still not the main things this is just some additional smaller ones but there's still one major place where you get scores so the sorry the points so yeah i in my opinion we don't have any single point salad game i actually think so and um there is a reason why stefan feld is called like or, or like stefan feld games are called feld, uh, feld salad right because it's his thing and that's the problem it's so hard to exactly explain what is that when you look at his games when you look at these games I, the, the there are problem, just i've the... never played any single one of his games yeah but when you look at these games this these are the he has, has this sort of a a, a gear mechanisms yeah and they all work well and they are well oiled but that's the thing there well are all oiled? gears i mean yeah i mean <laughs> like you get the gears you get you get the gears and you can see when you play the game you can see the gears you don't see any theme really and that's the thing where the Feld is the perfect example of abstract German type Euro with just seeing how the gears work and you trying to figure it out to get the most points. And this is your main goal, just to figure out how to play to get the maximum amount of points. And that's where I call Feld just, yeah, it is a Feld talent. That's where it is. That's where this term came for me. So, but... We'll argue about that. Uh, I actually think no, Ruth puts one super interesting point which we haven't discussed, but it's it's it really kind of makes it there. So he writes that you don't eat your salad in a single bite, scoring like scoring um, rounds, right? Or scoring, salad, yeah. But you you uh, mm -hmm. but throughout the all the salad, like throughout all. You don't the tell game, me how to eat my salad, Ruth. <laughs> so that's so why the, you can cool you, you score. Yeah. That's I why, actually I like why. super like the idea because this makes uh, that way I, I agree that the, for example five tribes is not point salad because you actually do single scoring at the end even if you get the points throughout the different like different ways different methods but these are the games where you score mm -hmm. throughout the games like this is the one that, that I just tried to explain was like super bad where you like you might want to get like just a single tile that is going to score and that's it you're not going to do anything with it you just put it on side and, but you got your points or whatever is like that so I I think that was like a super good idea I like it I, I'm mm -hmm. gonna pretty much stick yeah. with that yeah like somebody said seven wonders or can you call them or scythe uh, points out that's the thing most points you get you get at the end of the game you get it all in instant. You don't really get the game uh, points during the game that much. Or you don't even get them at all. I oh, don't get them at all. I think you score at the end. I think. Yeah. So, but anyway, let's go to the next one. Otherwise, we'll just uh, don't stop arguing. Yeah, let's go to the actually, next one. But I'm uh, super glad of actually. Yep. This might be the last term for me because I'm probably going to have to jump out at about 6 30. I think it's time. fine. I think we can just uh, take one more. Then let's just take one more. We can continue this at another time, though, because these, these have been some good discussions, and we've got a whole bunch of them. So, yeah, but the, we, yeah, okay. we'll see. Uh, but let's just so pick let's, one. Let's go. Here. Let's get the last one then. Which uh -huh. one? Let's get the gateway versus family games. We call that's not a term, though. But yeah, okay. All the, yeah, I mean, like some game terms, like family games, is a game term or genre, but. Um, for me, that's the thing. But where's the line between you call the game gateway game or you call it a family game? And I use this in different aspects. Mm -hmm. And I, I cannot even understand myself where I should call it the gateway game and where the family game. So uh, may, maybe it's just my small thought. But maybe uh, I don't call gateway games only the really easy games or, or not always the gateway games. I started thinking of gateway games as something which introduces you to the mechanic or something like that, to the theme or to the special aspects or to the genre of the games. So, for example, uh, Lords of Waterdeep would be a gateway game for me, but not a family game. I would that's, agree with that. That's the maybe an example for me. Well, I don't see big problem uh, with these two because I think that these two often can overlap. Yes, uh, no, they absolutely can overlap yeah. for sure. 
they can often overlap and it's fine. So for example, Imhotep, I would say it's both because uh, it's easy enough rule set to be fun for kids, for them to understand. And when I think about gateway games for, let's say, adults, is the one, not just what they can play, but what can get them into gaming. From which, uh, so for mm -hmm. example, I'm first gonna show the easier game and I can take from there a more complicated one. So Imhotep, for example, is the one where I can show like a couple of mechanics and I can take later on from there and show something like deeper. Or do I want to represent a certain mechanic? It's like so the same for me, uh, this is with the stockpile. Stockpile is yeah, the gateway game to the stock markets and mechanics. I'd say uh, stock market uh, stockpile is gateway game, but I wouldn't say it's a family game. Yeah, for example. yeah, that's what, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, well, yeah. And it's funny you said Lords of Waterdeep because I can actually give a very clear example with because I got Lords of Water. I've I've played Lords of Waterdeep app like over a thousand times, but just recently I got the board game and. I thought, oh man, this game is really not that complicated a game. I bet I could get the kid to play. So I've got uh, the wife and the kid, and we're getting ready to play, and I'm explaining the rules, and the kid's like, yeah, I'm out. Nope, not doing this. I'm out. And so she, she didn't want to play. Like it, it, was, it was just probably just probably just a little bit over her head, but she had no interest in playing that game. But it's clearly a gateway game as far as worker placement goes. Mm -hmm. Whereas King Domino... I feel is both a gateway game and a family game because she is all about that game now. She's very much into it. And I don't think that it's, I don't think it's just a difference in, in theme. I, I think that it's legitimately that one is actually like kids can, can grok one of them and not the other. And I think Lord's War Deep is just a little bit too much for, you know, a nine, 10 year old to be able to deal with for the most part, obviously there's going to be some that can, but in generally speaking, Lords of Waterdeep isn't going to be quite ready for that age group. And I think that that age group needs to be able to enjoy a game for it to be considered a family game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see that. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, yeah, it's hard to explain sometimes. It's just you go with the gut feeling. Yep. And yeah. at some point, there's, it blurs into basically the family games are becoming gateway games at the same time because there are like, let's say, there is that um, Quadropolis, for example. It has the basic version and advanced version as well. So that's where I would call advanced version gateway game as well, but I wouldn't call it completely a family game anymore. With the I wouldn't version. call it at all family game. Like the thing is that, would yeah, you? kids, I, I, I think I would nod. Like that's the, the thing, version. that's the thing. Simple. Yes, kids can do that. But I still see how it was mainly focused on adults and perhaps more as a gateway, not like teenagers, let's say, uh, not like to play with kids and adults. It's kind of on edge, but for me, it's mostly gateway. Like, for example, Survive Escape from Atlantis, it's family game. I wouldn't call it a gateway game because, yes, non-gamers can play it. But it's not all about that. For me, it's yeah, the next step. Yeah, they don't get too much into the board gaming world. Exactly. So, so for just... me, will I show something next after that? I mean, like, will I be able to show more complicated game after that? No, I would not. It's just completely fun. Mm -hmm. So it's just fun family game. This Ryan, for example, wrote that uh, gateway refers to complexity. Family game refers mostly to theme, where I don't actually agree that much but it's just my, my i think theme is very important for for family games but i think yeah. that the complexity is also important because it needs to be it's both simple enough for the entire family to be able to get into it but theme is hugely important for a family game whereas i think the theme is much less important for a gateway game because yeah, yeah okay. gateway almost yeah. strictly refers to complexity i think yeah. Yep. So yep. Both, yeah, I think Ryan's onto something there. Or gateway, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I will add one more thing, like maybe like kind of already last mentioned, thing. but yeah, last thing. Uh, for me, gateway game is the one that shows certain mechanic maybe in a simple way, something like that, or one or two mechanics. Sure. Yeah, I, I could agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. That be... was the last one for you, Ben Baker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to. 
book it on out of here. But yeah, the thing is that probably next time we're gonna do it's gonna be more reasonable time for Baker and yes, I'm getting a new schedule, not, so we're gonna yeah, maybe not a breakfast, not brunch time anymore for Europe, but yeah, well, it's gonna be just different. Maybe we'll have more guests then. Maybe maybe we'll have yes more guests and not just uh, maybe yeah. we can start inviting actual guests on the show too uh, yeah. again. It's yeah, I really want it Bruno come again, but it's just so hard to to get it right now because of our schedule, because of his schedule. So yeah, well, we want to. I want to get we'll some find. We'll find. designers uh, we'll just in here. Get people. So let's hold it for the best, and I'll, I'll do my best to get those really cool designers, and then you can come in, and we'll have a better timing, and then people can ask questions and such. So we'll we'll have a lot of fun. Definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. But uh, all right. till he we was... meet again. Yeah. Yep. So the next. Well, thanks time. everybody for showing up in the uh, chat room. There, it's good chat yeah. today. Yeah, it's like so busy that the chat is getting so busy that I'm definitely not reading it uh, fully through because chat otherwise busy I won't. Because of the game terms. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be uh, able to concentrate on what we are talking. I think this is the like primary more for me at least. Yeah. All right. Thanks, All right. everyone. Yep. See you then next time. All right. See yep. you later. Alligator. Bye-bye. And then, I'm sorry, just a moment. Three, two, one. And one, and one, and one.